Dream Chaser, an icon of the legendary space shuttle, was eagerly anticipated to replace the Starliner and usher NASA back to the golden era of four decades ago. Unfortunately, the journey has not gone as smoothly as expected. After years of development, Dream Chaser not only has set to make it into orbit, but has consistently delayed its launch schedule since 2021. However, in fact, the reason for these delays is not solely attributed to Dream Chaser and Sierra Space. So, why was Dream Chaser delayed? How has NASA reacted to this? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. A new commercial spacecraft developed by Sierra Space, set to restore the ability to transport experiments and equipment from the ISS through the Earth's atmosphere to land on the runway, is called Dream Chaser. The plane can host 3 to 7 members and up to 5,443 kilograms of cargo, transporting it all to pivotal stops in low Earth orbit, including the ISS. Think of Dream Chaser's story as a tale that unfolds over the years, starting way back to the early 2000s. It was created to change how we explore space, but its journey hasn't been easy. It's faced lots of challenges to become a symbol of the United States. A pivotal moment in this journey unfolded in 2016 when NASA, recognizing the potential and innovation encapsulated in Dream Chaser, awarded it one of the coveted Commercial Resupply Service II contracts. This marked a commitment from NASA to purchase a minimum of six resupply missions to the ISS, solidifying Dream Chaser's role in the future of space logistics. However, as the intricate puzzle of Dream Chaser's trajectory unfolded, a significant piece was the selection of its launch vehicle, the promising ULA's Vulcan Centaur. The challenges began to surface as the United States Air Force introduced new requirements in 2018 through the National Security Space Launch Agreement. These additional requisites, intended to enhance security and reliability, inadvertently contributed to delays in Vulcan's initial launch schedule. The ambitious timeline initially aimed for Vulcan to take flight by 2019, but a series of adjustments and postponements pushed the milestone to April of 2021. The web of challenges continued to grow as other complications intertwined with Vulcan's development. In 2021, Astrobotic, one of the maiden flight's payload providers, signaled the need for more time to prepare a payload, further delaying Vulcan's inaugural launch to 2022 and then later 2023. Concurrently, complications including delays in the development of BE-4 engines contributed to the grounded state of rockets that was scheduled to lift off in 2019. The domino effect of these delays was palpable, extending its reach to the meticulous dance of payload preparation. As the companies handling the payloads dealt with their issues, it created a ripple effect that messed up the well-planned schedule for getting Vulcan ready for Dream Chaser's mission. These delays in getting the payloads ready ended up being crucial in the bigger story of Dream Chaser's space journey. All the challenges faced by spacecraft and its launch vehicle are like reminders that reaching for the stars involves overcoming obstacles and every step forward is a win for human creativity in the vastness of space. In fact, the biggest issue with delay of Dream Chaser, and possibly not the last, is its dedicated vehicle, Vulcan Centaur as it mirrors a woven tapestry with unforeseen challenges. One of the notable chapters in this saga is marked by the explosion of Vulcan's upper stage tank during testing, a setback that sent ripples of uncertainty through the mission's trajectory. The revelation by ULA CEO Tori Bruno regarding an anomaly in the tank's structural article during qualification testing led to a meticulous investigation. The intricacies of this setback revealed stress risers near the tank's forward dome, a critical component made of thin stainless steel. Consequently, the nearly flight-ready Vulcan test article had to be transported back to the factory for intricate repairs. Most recently, on the 27th, Tori Bruno tweeted saying, Looks like Vulcan's CERT-1 First Flight Centaur 5 and final assembly in the new CVIACO line at Decatur. Hashtag Vulcan Rocket. Vulcan is coming. Despite this setback, Tori Bruno remains steadfast in his commitment to the mission's success, expressing confidence in the completion of Vulcan's maiden flight by December. This declaration, however, hinges on the assumption that no further complications arise, acknowledging the volatile nature of rocket development. As the schedules approach the anticipated time frame, uncertainties linger like shadows in the vast cosmic expanse. ULA is intent on flying two certification missions of a large rocket so it can complete paperwork for the U.S. Space Force and begin launching lucrative missions for the military. The company was supposed to start doing so last year and it started to come under significant pressure from Space Force officials to deliver. The U.S. military is ULA's most important customer. 
phenomenal plan for these certification launches entails flying Astrobotic's Lunar Lander on the CERT-1 mission in May and Dream Chaser on CERT-2 in August. During a teleconference with reporters about a few months ago, ULA CEO Tori Bruno insisted that this schedule would allow Vulcan to become certified and fly its first national security mission at the end of the year, out in quarter four. Yet on this nominal plan, if Astrobotic flies in May and Dream Chaser isn't scheduled to fly in December, there'd be no chance to fly a national security mission this year. After the second certification mission, there will need to be, at a minimum, a few months for the government to analyze data and declare Vulcan fit for high-value, high-performance missions. That's why the scheduled launch of Dream Chaser in late 2023 may be the most optimistic plan, but not guaranteed. Who knows if Vulcan has enough time to explore the technology processing and test for unforeseen challenges during execution. To be honest, the potential impacts of the schedule on the second Vulcan launch could extend the mission to 2024, painting a picture of a dance where any mistake could lead to delays and challenges for Sierra Nevada Corporation and the entire Dream Chaser mission. So, can Vulcan fulfill its mission? Why didn't Sierra Nevada Corporation or SNC choose another rocket as an alternative? Many have asked this question. Let's go back to the time before SNC chose the launch vehicle for Dream Chaser. In the context of choosing many among launch vehicles, the choice of Vulcan Centaur emerged as a result of a comprehensive assessment. SNC, the driving force behind Dream Chaser, delved into the details of various launch vehicles, exploring possibilities that span beyond the American borders. European and Japanese launch vehicles, namely the Ariane 6 and H3, entered the arena as contenders. Even the visionary founders of SpaceX and Blue Origin, Elon and Bezos, with their respective launch vehicles, were part of the extensive evaluation process. As the deliberations unfolded, it became evident that safety, reliability, and competitive pricing stood out as paramount considerations in the decision-making matrix. Reliability, an essential tenet in the unforgiving expanse of space, played a crucial role in ensuring the success of Dream Chaser's missions to the ISS. Competitive pricing emerged not merely as a cost consideration, but as a strategic advantage. The economic viability of the launch vehicle had to be harmoniously balanced with its technical prowess, ensuring that the venture remained financially sustainable without compromising the mission's integrity. The collaboration with ULA, rooted in long-standing relationship dating back to NASA's commercial crew program, held a unique advantage. The Atlas V, an existing ULA vehicle, was considered initially for Dream Chaser's maiden mission, showcasing the depth of the partnership. However, as the stakes and ambitions rose with the CRS-2 contracts, the focus shifted to ULA's cutting-edge Vulcan Centaur. At that time, the core factor of safety aligned with stringent standards for space exploration, where precision and predictability were non-negotiable. Despite the uncertainty, this was the choice that I felt is best for the program, said John Curry, Dream Chaser CRS2 Program Director at SNC. Overall, there's still a lot to do for the Vulcan rocket, and whether Dream Chaser's timeline can be guaranteed depends on ULA's progress. If ULA's Vulcan rocket can't meet the requirements, Dream Chaser still has a safer alternative, the workhorse of SpaceX Falcon. Dream Chaser was designed and can carry a maximum weight of 15.7 tons. In expendable mode, a Falcon 9 can transport 22.8 tons of fuel to land on the planet. Because the Dream Chaser could be lifted from the LEO to the Falcon, a Falcon could easily lift it to the LEO. On the Dream Chaser's side, there have been certain noticeable achievements. According to a company announcement, Dream Chaser underwent its first power-up this early summer, where engineers simulated the input power that the spacecraft will generate through its solar array. Additionally, more than 2,000 individual tiles, larger and more robust than those used on the space shuttle, have been meticulously assembled. These tiles are designed to withstand temperatures of up to 2,600 Fahrenheit through multiple re-entry cycles, showcasing the spacecraft's durability. We all probably know the Dream Chaser space plane is the loser to Dragon and Starliner and NASA's commercial crew program in 2014 to send crews to orbit via private companies. It was a really big fall for the company after more than five years of pursuing this contract. Nonetheless, Sierra Space, or SNC, persevered, eventually reestablishing and strengthening their relationship of trust with NASA. So, what makes them believe in NASA's future? This is the real reason NASA and SNC are developing the Dream Chaser space plane. The space shuttle was the face of NASA to most of the world for 30 years before it was finally retired in 2011. 20 or 50 or even 100 years from now, the shuttle will be remembered as an extremely useful vehicle and a technical marvel. 
so far, nothing can compare to its functional abilities, serving as a launch vehicle, cargo carrier, both up and down, human transporter, on-orbit living quarters, construction shack, space station builder, satellite launcher and retriever, satellite servicer, and research lab in itself. It was mostly reusable, entering the atmosphere like a spaceship, then transitioning to operation as an airplane and landing on a runway, with the crew walking away with dignity and relative comfort, and the entire final approach and landing viewable on live TV by millions around the world, reminding U.S. citizens of America's technical and geopolitical leadership. Sadly, the space shuttle program proved that reusable space planes aren't exactly the foolproof best way to put humans and technology into space and was planned to be since the dog days of the Apollo program. With a total program cost of nearly $250 billion when adjusted for inflation, it'd be inaccurate to call the shuttle program cost-effective. Keep in mind, each space shuttle orbiter was originally intended to complete as many as 100 missions before the end of its life cycle. None of the six orbiters ever even came close to this figure. In spite of all the amazing science credited to the space shuttle, including the Hubble and Chandra space telescopes, the Ulysses Solar Probe, and 48 different trips to two different space stations, the cost is a blemish on an otherwise historic list of accomplishments. The last American space plane to complete a mission in orbit touched down at the Kennedy Space Center on July 21, 2011, when the space shuttle orbiter Atlantis came to a wheel stop at the end of the 15,000 foot or 4,572 meter long runway, it marked the end of an era for NASA. But thanks to Sierra Nevada and its now legally separate Sierra space offshoot, the era of the reusable space plane is not in an end. If anything, it's probably only getting started. Although the company missed out on the 2014 contract award for NASA's commercial crew program, that isn't stopping the company from continuing to prepare for human missions aboard the launch vehicle. Of course, Dream Chaser can't do all that the original shuttle did, but it can perform the shuttle's single most important task of transporting crews and cargo to the ISS and returning them to a safe and dry landing on a runway in full view of the public. Compared to SpaceX, Dragon and Boeing Starliner's ISS are both capsules resembling those from Mercury, Gemini, and the Apollo programs of the 60s. Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo crews landing in capsules in the saltwater ocean were required to wait up to several hours until a rescue ship or helicopter arrived to pull them to safety. With all the unavoidable pitching and bobbing in the open ocean, more than half of the waiting astronauts got seasick. A capsule makes a poor boat. We almost lost astronaut Gus Grissom in a Mercury program landing due primarily to difficult recovery operations in the open ocean. Reliable ground landing of a capsule using propulsion will be difficult with poor downward crew visibility and limited maneuvering capability. A capsule coming to Earth on parachutes will need to land in an unpopulated and relatively flat area of the U.S. Since the parachutes have little to no maneuvering ability, it'll be a challenge to reliably avoid hazards such as ravines, power lines, cabins, livestock, and barns. This needs to be done under normally windy conditions. Crews returning from orbit in a Russian Soyuz capsule landing in remote areas of Russia must wait sometimes hours until rescue people arrive. We've seen images on Russian TV of rescue personnel struggling to pull cosmonauts from a Soyuz capsule lying on its side. We then see rescue people placing them on stretchers for transport to recovery facilities. Experience with capsules landing on water or land has shown either method to have been relatively crude and unfriendly to crews and other operations personnel. Astronauts we've known would be willing to ride down on a parachute if that were the only way to get assigned to a mission, but astronauts and pilots also want to touch down on a runway if at all possible. Dream Chaser will perform better and have lower operating costs than either of the other capsule systems. Although those differences could be small compared with the advantage Dream Chaser would have in enabling a live TV coverage of their entire approach and landing of each flight. Besides, although only a quarter of the length of the space shuttle, Dream Chaser has greater carrying capacity than the other spacecraft being used in NASA's commercial resupply program. Equipped with an expendable cargo module, it can carry six tons into low Earth orbit, enough to supply astronauts on the International Space Station for half a year. Almost all of that six tons is carried under pressurized conditions. It can also bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing. 
There's space on board for up to seven astronauts. The versatility is one of the other outstanding features of Dream Chaser. All the aforementioned features contribute to making Dream Chaser by far the most versatile spacecraft that NASA is currently funding. Not only can it carry cargo and or crew, but it can accomplish an array of missions ranging from microgravity experiments to remote sensing to servicing deployed satellites. It potentially can be used for both civil and military missions and with the addition of radiation hardening can be utilized in higher orbits. It also can be lofted into orbit on a variety of launch vehicles, including human-rated rockets if a decision is made to use it for astronaut transportation. SNC executives are careful not to get ahead of themselves when discussing all the ways Dream Chaser might one day be used. After all, it won't perform its first cargo mission until 2021, and only six of those are guaranteed under the present resupply contract. However, the company's website describes Dream Chaser's capabilities in terms that suggest carrying cargo to the space station could be just the beginning. If SNC's past history is any indication, this is only the first chapter in the Dream Chaser saga. The U.S.'s space agency isn't the only one interested in this SUV. The United Nations and the European Space Agency, among others, are investigating its use for other future missions. That's because the Dream Chaser offers relatively affordable, relatively ready-made access to space for astronauts, experiments, and stuff. Plus, it can return not just to Earth or Earth space centers, but to Earth's airports. For the U.S. military, it'd be able to transport cargo within three hours. It'd mean less weight and travel time for supplies and equipment for the U.S. military to be delivered to crews in low Earth orbits. The SNC Dream Chaser spacecraft could also bring military personnel to space, and it opens up the opportunity for commercial space travel in the future, should the craft prove successful. The U.S. Air Force has shown their interest in space vehicles to supplement traditional air, land, and surface transportation modes. These space vehicles could also support non-combat activities such as humanitarian relief operations and medical missions. The first official Dream Chaser launch date is set for 2024. All the best for this dream. Over a decade ago, most people imagined space shuttles when they thought of spaceflight symbols. On July 21st, 2011, the final shutdown mission touched down at the legendary Space Coast facility in Florida. As Atlantis landed for the last time, this chapter also marked the conclusion of NASA's 30-year space shuttle program. Since then, the historic runway at Kennedy Space Center has largely remained quiet for far too long as humans lost the ability to return from space with low runway G landings. But that's about to change because Dream Chaser tenacity is almost ready to launch. Recognized as a space plane, Dream Chaser will be the second vehicle following the space shuttle capable of runway landings, even surpassing the shuttle in its autonomous control capabilities at every phase of the journey. Looking like a small space shuttle, Dream Chaser lost out to SpaceX and Boeing for NASA's commercial crew program, but won a spot in the second round of commercial cargo missions to deliver supplies to the International Space Station. Dream Chaser is a lifting body design based on work NASA did decades ago for a space plane called HL-20 that was to deliver passengers and cargo to an Earth-orbiting space station. Sierra Space adopted the design to service the International Space Station, and it won the NASA contract to deliver cargo. Designed to navigate the celestial pathways with wings, much like the iconic space shuttle of yesteryears, the tenacity promises to restore the spectacle of a winged rocket launching into the sky and gracefully descending back to Earth. As Dream Chaser can't fly to space on its own, a big rocket, namely ULA's Vulcan Centaur, is required to deliver the craft to low Earth orbit. Sierra Space and its partner United Launch Alliance, or ULA, have been working tirelessly to usher in a new era of space travel with their combined efforts focused on the imminent launch of the Dream Chaser tenacity. After years of research and development, they finally achieved significant progress that demonstrates a clear transition from concept to reality. As the space plane evolves from its early skeletal form to a fully operational and technologically advanced vehicle adorned with thermal tiles, the forthcoming mission promises to put every component to the test. Sierra Space Corporation has also been consistently updating the progress of the spacecraft on its social media platforms. 
Sierra Space recently shared the latest image of the Dream Chaser, presenting a stunning angle. The rudder was the first flight control surface to be installed on Dream Chaser and consists of almost 100% titanium. The development of an effective set of flight control surfaces was a critical advance in the development of aircraft. It'll aid in maintaining stability and gravitational balance during the spacecraft's ascents into higher altitudes. Furthermore, it's crafted from nearly 100% titanium material, which offers durability, corrosion resistance, and lightness. This attribute contributes to reducing unnecessary weight, subsequently cutting down on fuel consumption and enhancing cost efficiency. Another update to the Dream Chaser is the inside of its compartment. The internal structure of Dream Chaser had a visible gold composite of aluminum foil and other materials. This is used as a leakage liner to prevent oxygen from leaking out of the vehicle and maintain optimal pressure in the cabin. In addition, in July, Sierra Space hosted comprehensive training with NASA's SpaceX Crew-8 astronauts to learn the inner workings of Dream Chaser. Three astronauts, Mike Barrett, Matt Dominic, and Jeanette Epps, are members of the upcoming NASA's SpaceX Crew-8 mission to the ISS, which is currently slated to launch no earlier than February of next year. During their planned six-month stay, Dream Chaser is scheduled to make its maiden voyage to deliver cargo to the ISS as part of NASA's Commercial Resupply Service's CRS-2 contract. We're pleased to train the crew that will be on board the International Space Station for Dream Chaser's first cargo resupply mission, said Sierra Space CEO Tom Weiss. These astronauts underwent an extensive training curriculum to prepare them for how to interact with our space plane when it bursts with the ISS. We are honored to join NASA's cargo resupply team. Company specialists conducted the eight-hour training session, which took place at Sierra Space's Louisville, Colorado facility. The first two parts were classroom training, followed by two parts working inside a full-size mock-up of Dream Chaser. To be honest, true to its namesake tenacity, the Dream Chaser has persevered to achieve what Jeanette Cavandi, president of Sierra Space, declared back in May. We should be ready to go by the end of this year. This statement has marked Tenacity's readiness for its first journey, symbolizing the resurgence of space shuttle technology. It's a culmination of perfecting Dream Chaser's trials, but let's not forget that Dream Chaser can't independently ascend to orbit. It must rely on ULA's Vulcan rocket for a part of the journey. That's why the larger issue regarding Dream Chaser's mission execution speed pertains to its downstream effects on the highly anticipated Vulcan rocket launch manifest. United Launch Alliance is set to unveil ULA's Vulcan Centaur within the December timeframe, and integration in December or January would support a launch in the early months of 2024. At this juncture, a primary concern has shifted from the durability test article to the inaugural mission of the Vulcan rocket. Vulcan's first mission involves carrying payloads from various companies, excluding Sierra Space. This launch is the second where durability will be integrated. However, the delay of Vulcan's first flight has raised apprehensions about the punctuality of the second launch. ULA recently uncovered a weakness in the upper stage forward dome of Vulcan, necessitating the nearly flight-ready rocket's return to the factory for enhancements. Despite this setback, the company remains confident in the rocket's successful liftoff this year. When questioned about Vulcan's delays, Tom, CEO of Sierra Space, said that they're closely monitoring Vulcan emphasizing the importance of its first flight before transitioning to the second. This quote underscored Sierra Space's reservations regarding Vulcan's timeline. On a positive note, ULA CEO Tori Bruno recently expressed optimism that the second Vulcan could be ready for launch by early next year. Ultimately, the second Dream Chaser launch heavily depends on the outcome of its maiden flight. With the hopes for a smooth maiden flight and subsequent pre-launch testing, the second Vulcan's projected to launch around February of the following year. This second launch, featuring the highest durability, will mark the first of at least seven missions Sierra Space will execute for NASA to facilitate cargo transport to and from the International Space Station. But that's just the beginning of what Dream Chaser can achieve. In itself, it holds numerous advantages for further development in space. Although Dream Chaser is only a quarter the length of the space shuttle, it has greater carrying capacity than the other spacecraft being used in NASA's commercial resupply program. Equipped with an expendable cargo module, it can carry six tons into low Earth orbit, enough to supply astronauts on the ISS for half a year. Almost all of those six tons are carried under pressurized conditions. 
It can also bring back two tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing. There's space on board for up to seven astronauts. The versatility is one of the other outstanding features of Dream Chaser. All the aforementioned features contribute to making Dream Chaser by far the most versatile spacecraft that NASA is currently funding. Not only can it carry cargo and or crew, but it can also accomplish an array of missions ranging from microgravity experiments to remote sensing to servicing deployed satellites. It potentially can be used for both civil and military missions, and with the addition of radiation hardening, can be utilized in higher orbits. It can also be lofted into orbit on a variety of launch vehicles, including human-rated rockets if a decision is made to use it for astronaut transportation. Sierra Space Executives are careful not to get ahead of themselves when discussing all the ways Dream Chaser might one day be used. However, the company's website describes Dream Chaser's capabilities in terms that suggest carrying cargo to the space station could merely be the first chapter in the Dream Chaser narrative. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.